Yes, me and horses go back a very long way. In fact, I have been called the most natural horseman of my generation, and in no way do I look like a very scared monkey strapped onto a spaniel. I mean, I still like bikes, but these are different. You see, horses have brains and feelings, and they don't like it if you put petrol in them. If you own a horse, you should treat it well, and if you're going to ride one, you should be sure it's safe. Ask Jane Arkell. Arkell? Yeah, but no relation to legendary Irish thoroughbred and three-time Cheltenham Gold Cup winner of the same name. Anyway, Jane paid £4,000 for two horses from Kelly's Cobbs, a stables near Scunthorpe. One of them was called Ed. Ed? Yes, but no relation to Mr. Ed, legendary star of the 1950s US sitcom of the same name. Anyway, Ed was sold as a six-year-old when he turned out to be four. The other horse was Monty, who Jane wanted to buy for her teenage daughter. She's been riding since she was probably about four years old, and more than anything, she's wanted to compete in show jumping, and she, it's what she really enjoys doing. And you said that much? Yes, very much so, and he said that Monty would be perfect. Perfect, except for the serious ligament injury that Jane only discovered after buying him. He was sold to us as a jumping horse, um, suitable for Megan to go and compete and jump regularly. Um, when I found out about the injury and you know, got advice from the vet, he shouldn't be jumping, um, not with having had that injury in the past, because it, it, there is a high chance of it reoccurring. Um, he may well have threw my daughter off. Kelly's Cobbs eventually agreed to take back the horses and refund Jane's money, except for the final £500, which they refused to hand over. This is their website, where they sell horses, ride horses and uh, stand on horses. That's strange. Even stranger, the man Jane dealt with is nowhere to be seen, but we know he's called David Thomas. And no matter how hard you look, you won't find him mentioned. Funny. It's almost as if there's something he's keen to hide. Well, you know what? There is. It's Rogue Traders taking you back. <laughs> yeah, let's return to 2005, when Watchdog exposed the same David Thomas. Guess what? Selling horses as one thing when they were quite another. David Thomas? David, have you got anything to say about horse imports? And complaints to us from your customers? It's BBC Watchdog. One year on, Thomas was jailed after Watchdog also found him selling so-called pedigree puppies. In such poor condition, many of them died. Francis of Assisi, he ain't. And now, as a disqualified company director, he isn't allowed to be involved in the running of a company either. Yet Lisa Wood dealt with him directly when she went to Kelly's Cobbs looking for a horse for her grandkids. She told him she didn't want a difficult young horse. She wanted an adult. He offered her Woody. When I bought Woody, I was told, oh, he's four. I discovered that his true age is when the vet came to start vaccinations for me, where he gave uh, Woody a health check, then lifted his lip up to look at his teeth, uh, and then informed me that he was, in fact, only two and a half. So, not an adult after all, but in horsey terms, a teenager and a typically moody one. The reality is he barges, he kicks, he's unpredictable. I've had a friend that led him for me once. He yanked her so bad she had to go to A&E. He's going to run. Uh, no! Ah! <laughs> so it, that's clear, really, even to me, who knows nothing about horses, that you've got a problem there. A big problem, and as you can see for yourself, with the rolling, how could I put, you know, a child on Woody? I can't. Just too dangerous. Too dangerous. Danger, count us in. It's time for a sting with hidden cameras and stuff. Enter our expert, horse know-it-all Fleur Field. She's visiting Kelly's Cobb, posing as a customer. She's very specific in her request. She wants a horse that's suitable for a novice rider. In return, they recommend one called Loppy. These ones well. They're really nice guys. She, she does pop the early odd drum. Um, she's absolutely brilliant. 
12, eh? That means she's in her horsey prime, seen a bit of the world, mature, yet mobile. Talking of which... Hello. Well, shoe my hooves. It's David Thomas. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> well, I'm a better look. Restrain yourselves, ladies. This is business, not pleasure. How much is Lappy? I don't know. She's 16th or 19th. Um, we can always talk on price. OK, yeah. It sounds like a bargain, but then I'm no expert. Fleur, however, is. Being the expert she is, she thinks she spotted telltale signs of an injury. A swollen hind leg. I really like the look of her, but I just thought one of her legs looked bigger than the other. I think it's because she's been staying for about a week and shut down. Yeah, the problem is because the weather's so bad, you keep them stable. Yeah, my leg swells up when I stay indoors as well. It happens all the time. It's very painful. Our team leaves to mull over the deal. Will we be back? You bet. Yeah, and what are the odds of them selling us a fine, healthy beast like Capote here, rather than one that isn't fit to be ridden? Exactly. Saddle up. We're in for a bumpy ride. Welcome back. Capote's in his dressing room, by the way, and we're going back to horse dealers Kelly's Cobbs of Scunthorpe, or more particularly, David Thomas, who's banned from being involved in running a company, but seems to be very involved in this one. He's tried to sell us a horse called Loppy, who we think might have an injury, but we won't know until we buy her. So, it's back to the yard for us, and once again we're taken to see David Thomas, looking very at home in the company office. Earlier he told us Loppy was 12. Now we find there's no age on her horse passport. Uh, no, uh, David cross checks with the Kelly's Cobbs website. We've got it down to 16. Okay. Is that about right, do you think? Yeah, yeah. Whenever there's any doubt, we always get the backs to it. Okay. 16 is nothing, you know, it's got 10 years riding left. Well, you know, 12, 16, who's counting apart from the vet? Anyway, what if there's a problem after we buy? The way the warranty works, you get 14 days' warranty. Um, and if the horse fails vetting um, or has, is different from how we describe it, it's got a book, a rear, or anything like that, you bring it back and get your full money back. If you decide you just don't like it, then mm. it's an exchange. And that lasts for 30 days. OK, so let's get this straight. It's a 14 day trial, but you can only get your money back if you've been missold the horse in the first place. So it's not really a trial then. Despite misgivings, we go ahead and buy Loppy for £1,250. First stop then, horse rescue charity Red Wings. And I reckon she likes it here. Come on. What a mess. Loppy, what have you done? Red Wings vet Nick de Brouwer is a top dog in the horsey world, head of the Horse Equine Welfare Council. He's agreed to give Loppy a thorough examination. And when I say thorough, hmm. That one's not going back in the bathroom cabinet, is it? Preferably not, no. Nick picks up on the swollen leg our own expert spotted earlier. It's nice and smooth, and then suddenly you've got very knobbly skin there, so that's a very significant scar. It extends sort of quite a long way around, so this was probably quite a big open wound at some point, which would have taken quite a time to heal. Still, it has healed. It doesn't seem to be causing pain, so it shouldn't affect her ability to be ridden. But sadly, Loppy has other problems. I don't know if you can see her teeth there. Yeah. They're all pretty symmetrical, except this poor one here, which... It's just sticking out. Yeah, right it's angle. sticking out at completely the wrong angle, and that's been quite badly injured at some point. It does paint a picture again of a horse that's been through the wars a little bit. Absolutely, yeah. She's, uh, she's definitely served her time. So how old do you think Loppy is? Looking at the teeth and the grooves on the teeth, I would be putting my money on a 25-year-old horse. Because this horse was sold to us as 16 years old. Yeah. No way that could possibly be the case. No. We're talking now about a horse that's, you know, every day is precious kind of thing, as opposed to expecting to have a good five, ten years of fun with her. Loppy, if she wasn't a horse, if she was a human being, 
would be a pensioner about now, be getting ready for retirement, so there's no way that she should be ridden regularly. The best place for her is here, at Red Wings, relaxing the rest of her life. So we now can be sure that David Thomas has missold us a horse. But is this typical behaviour from him or is he acting out of character? I need some advice. You see, Ed, yes, Lop is a horse, but one horse is only one horse, of course. Yeah, and she's a mighty fine looking one. But I think you need more proof. You need to get yourself another horse. Well, that's what I was going to say. He's always trying to make the jokes, that guy. I just wish you'd get on with the story. OK, on with the story. Our researcher, Brona, has a grand to spare, and she wants to buy an easy-to-ride horse suitable for a novice. So she calls Kelly's cobs and speaks to... Hello? It's Kelly. Um, there's one called Queenie in Texas, and she's about 15 hands, a coloured mare. Now, if I round her... Right, and she's easy to handle and things? Yeah, she's very easy. When she starts jumping, she needs a, um, you know, a competent novice who knows how to jump, but not, uh, she's not difficult at all. So, right price, right temperament. Time to meet Queenie in person. She's a horse. That's inappropriate. Uh, well, I am a bit of a novice rider. Right. I'm not the best <laughs> yet. Um, so I'm just looking to get one to it so I can learn on this way. <laughs> she's a bit of a Mardi mare, a bit grumpy, um, but she's absolutely fine to ride. Uh, she walk top canters and jumps, but she does need a bit of work to get her into canter. The staff take Queenie for a ride. As you're about to see, Brona is no expert. I like that it looks like a yeah, it, it's a horse. How much are we paying you? Anyway, here's David Thomas to close the deal. What's his opinion on this horse? OK, David, deal done. After buying Queenie, we deliver her to Red Wings, where Nick de Brower can check her out. And it's soon obvious she's not the horse we were promised. She's hard to handle and seriously lame. Things aren't particularly good for her, unfortunately. Effectively, she's got broken bones on the back of her leg, which are crucial to her being able to move around freely. This is a horse that we've bought as a riding horse, and it, it, even to the point where we were told that she would be perfect for a novice to ride. What's the reality? The reality is she's not only not a riding horse, but she's definitely not a novice horse. Um, her temperament means that she would potentially be very dangerous for a novice rider. For any rider, she's potentially dangerous because if that leg gets put under stress, it could go. And if it went un from underneath her, she's going to crash and the rider's going to crash with her. And for her, of course, she's going to be in pain, so she's going to be suffering when she's being ridden. It's starting to sound like the picture for Queenie is, is pretty bleak. Because of the injury that she's got, the things inside that joint are going to deteriorate and could be a matter of a year, a couple of years, but it's going to be so bad that she's going to be put down. So it is, you know, fundamentally very bleak. At Red Wings, Queenie will now get some much needed pain relief. Queenie's remaining days may not be that great in number, but at least we know that she'll be spending the rest of them here, where she'll be in as much comfort as she can be. The question still remains, how on earth was she ever for sale in the first place? Well, there's only one man who can answer that, and that's David Thomas himself. He's a difficult man to bring out in the open, but we've come up with an idea. It might not work, but it's definitely worth a punt. There you go. Look at that. Everyone loves a carrot top. Our investigation into horse dealer David Thomas is moving into the final straight. He's missold us two horses, one that was supposed to be 16 turned out to be nearer 25. The other, described as a good jumper, is so severely injured she'll soon have to be put down. Now, David Thomas spends most of his time inside Kelly's Cobbs in Scunthorpe. How will we tempt him out? I wonder. Easy. We call him up and say we're interested in buying not just one, but two horses. Will he take the bait? If you take him two, then 
of the deal can be so much nicer. <laughs> of course he does. So, you know, as I say, I'm, I'm a horse dealer and there's never a bad time to take a profit. Yeah, I think we've gathered that already. What we don't know is which horses he'll try to sell us this time. And what he doesn't know is what he's going to get out of the deal. You see, we haven't just tempted him with money, but with a part exchange as well. But the horse we're planning to part exchange with, David Thomas, is no ordinary beast, no. It's rare. It's as rare as anything. It's a thoroughbred, and his name is Samson. Yes, a horse not quite as described. Sound familiar? While our undercover team does the deal, I'm going to be hiding in the van with the crew. Hey, you know what? There seems to be more and more of them these days. And at least two of them are wearing the same skirt. Right, everyone in? And we're off to Kelly's Cobbs, where our man is ready to meet us. Hiya. Hi, David. Any better? No. While I wait in the van, David talks up the horses he wants to sell. She holds her own in the field, which is important with horses yeah, this size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nobody messes her about, nor does she mess about with other people. Yeah. Okay. Confident that his double sale's in the bag, David turns to the part exchange of our thoroughbred, Samson. I get thoroughbreds offered to me every day of the week for nothing or low hundreds. Really? really do. Yeah. And I've got one here now that I've got off for £1,000, and I can't sell it. Yeah, but you haven't seen Samson. <laughs> Oh, Come have a look. Shall we get Samson out? After all, he is a very special horse. Right. Look at him. There he is! <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Thought it was a thoroughbred. I suppose once you're finished with it, you could describe it as almost anything, couldn't oh, you, right. David? Matt, all right, BBC Road Traders. Oh, how are you? Yeah. yeah, good to see you. I thought I'd got a sale with you as well. Uh, I'm afraid not today. This is one sale you won't be making. Although you'll remember these two that you did sell us. That's Loppy, described originally as 12 years old, then you changed it to 16. Actually, we've had her aged somewhere between 20 and 25. She hasn't got a lot of riding left in her, unfortunately. Right. Now, that's Queenie. She's lame in her hind legs and she can't really do anything. She'll be lucky if she makes it through the next couple of years without being Right, put, and have these been made down. complaints to us? Because we do sell on a 14-day trial. Yeah, unfortunately, the problem is with the 14-day trial, you changed your mind, even with us, to saying, if there's a problem, if you can show us there's a problem, then yeah. we'll take the horse back. That's not the same as a 14-day trial, is it? Well, it is. It's the 14-day trial that's stated on no, our because, website. Be I can show you, refund after refund, we've done where people have brought horses back for genuine reasons, and they've been refunded in Wouldn't form. it be better to get the description of the horse right in the first place? Take Queenie, for instance. She has terrible behavioural problems. She's lame in her back right. leg. I actually the don't remember this horse, so I can't I'm quote. not sure if that worries me more or well, less, Well, no, because, I mean, we do have people who work here who sell horses on our behalf. We bought the horse from you. What I suggest we do, I've been fair. I haven't run off like a lot of people do. I've well, given my you, opinion. you live here. This is your property. <laughs> Where would you run? All right, all right. Well, OK, so if any complaints you've got, let's get them over to me, let's address them properly. Not under these circumstances, and let's get them sorted. I will show to you time after time again where we do refund for genuine reasons. Why does it have to get to that stage? Well, it doesn't, Why because this is the first I've heard of it. Why can't you actually find out what these horses well, are like? Well, you asked me a question. Why does it have to get to that stage? To I will answer that. That's irresponsible. I, you asked me that question. Why does it, it doesn't. If we're made aware of it, then we can address it. This is the first I've been Why made aware of it. Why does a customer have to I'm be made aware of it? If we'd have been made, well, Why do they have to take did it we know it was lame? Why didn't you? Did we know it was lame? Well, if you didn't know it was lame, surely you should have done. Why? That's the vet's job. OK, is, have you got everything you need now? Do you know, what I really need from you is an assurance you're not going to carry on selling horses, because you've no, shown, I am going to you've sell shown horses, over a decade and that you I definitely don't, do you are believe not I sell horses correctly. You are not yes, responsible we don't get it right to sell animals time. of any sort. Well, I, I disagree with that point. We've got many, many people who will disagree with that. Happy customers. David, thank you very thank much you for, for talking to us. You're welcome. All right, bye now. I do like the thoroughbred, by the way. It's not for sale. So that was uh, Kelly's Cobbs. Here we are. We're in Kelly's Cobbs. And um, David Thomas's Cobblers. David Thomas says he sells many horses each week and has many satisfied customers. He says 20% of the horses sold are returned and that they always refund these customers 
That includes us if we'd made a complaint. He adds that their warranty covers all the cases we featured. He says all companies make mistakes and that he couldn't have known about Loppy's age or Queenie's state of health. If a horse fails vetting, it's unfortunate, but doesn't point to anything more sinister. Well, unfortunately for you, David, that points to the fact that you become the latest face on our rogues gallery.